Hello, I'm Gus Downing, publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the LP News Network. We're here today with Rosa Marie Sostilio, currently the Vice President of Loss Prevention for Barnes & Noble and past chairperson for the NRF LP Council, and formerly the Senior Vice President of Asset Protection for Saks Fifth Avenue, where she was responsible for enterprise risk management. You know, this past October, the American Society of Industrial Security, the largest security association in the world, broadened their scope worldwide to that of enterprise security risk management, a holistic approach to security. ESRM, what it's commonly referred to, uses risk management principles to manage security-related risk across an enterprise. ESRM does not define an organizational structure, but the vision of ESRM is to manage the protection of an organization's enterprise-wide enterprise assets, enabling the business to advance its mission. Now, Rose has been responsible for enterprise risk management in her past, and we wanted to define it, talk about it, and explain it so that you can understand what it means long term for your career development. Rosa, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. You know, you basically uh, had the job yourself. Can you talk to it in the various departments it was responsible for and in, in what drove the processes? Sure. Well, even though I was responsible for that for the whole risk portfolio, it was still called asset protection. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't change the title of it, and it really evolved throughout the years. Uh, what started with you know security evolved into loss prevention, evolved into asset protection, and then um, I think just through confidence that the management team had, they threw in different elements. So it was uh, insurance and its totality, totality, you know, the the whole risk of the insurance and the safety. And then they actually even threw in the CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer, which I think is a very unique approach. Yeah. And the thinking there was that they wanted it to be um, um, different than IT because sometimes there are some competing um, priorities. Mm -hmm. You know, IT wants to usually push the, the um, programs and their um, objectives through quickly, and they wanted to make sure that there was um, someone took a breath and made sure that the security element was um, adhered to. So it worked really, really well for a long time. The company hotline came into us as well, so it didn't go into HR. Uh, we managed it and we worked with HR hand in hand with them. Um, so the thinking was that the, the entire risk would be under one person and the accountability was under one person. And it just really made a lot of sense as opposed to having many people working with things. Um, I worked very closely with the internal audit group um, and still continue to do so. That's a, another very, very important element uh, into the program mm -hmm. so that all the checks and balances are, um, are thought through. Mm -hmm. But you manage that entire scope. Outside of the, not the internal audit, but everything else, yes, okay. I manage the entire scope. Yeah. And from an accountability standpoint, it just it does make a lot of sense. Sure. You had the CSO reporting to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you had a broader view of the entire risk and loss picture of the organization. Did. How did that give you leverage on the strength performance, and did it increase your predictive abilities? Absolutely, it did. So the the accountability rested with me. So I couldn't say it was this group or it was that group, right? It was me. It was my group. Yeah. So um, from an accountability standpoint, it's much more difficult. But from an ex a strategy execution standpoint, it's a lot easier mm -hmm. because your t entire team is working together to solve one problem, mm -hmm. right? Solving the, the, the shortage problem um, and then the entire risk that goes with that. So it's access control. It's, you know, all the different po touch points that you have all come back to the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it just really made a lot of sense. It's a lot more pressure because, right. again, the accountability right. is with you and you just can't push the blame off right. for anyone else. So I'm so used to taking on accountability myself based on this process. Mm -hmm. you know, but at that time, the results were you know, best in class. Right. Uh, and it really did make a lot of sense. Why aren't there more in our industry, in the loss prevention and asset protection field, you know, you know, managing an enterprise risk holistically? I think it has to do with um, the culture of each organization. You know, are they comfortable in, in doing that? They're putting a big bet on one area mm -hmm. when you do that, right? Uh, it has to do with the individuals in the roles, and are they comfortable taking on that kind of accountability? Because mm -hmm. you you're up a lot at night, right? Because there's a lot of things that keep you up. Sure. And there's really no one to turn to and say, well, it's that other person's uh, you know, issue. Right. Um, so it has to do, I think, with the individual in role. It has to do with the culture of the organization. And are we willing to um, take on more and take on that accountability that goes with it? Mm -hmm. And it also means you have to go out and learn a lot more, too. And 
You have to learn a lot within the culture. I right. think if you really work with your business partners and really understand um, what everyone is doing, it, it will eventually come to you if you're open and you're willing to take on more. Uh, you know, what do you think about as this is development last year, and and is the total retail loss program that was rolled out last year is that kind of a similar? Is there symmetry there between absolutely, them? Absolutely, absolutely. I think what Aziz did was fantastic. I mean, I think it's where we're, we all should be going, mm -hmm. especially with the cost cutting. Everyone's trying to do more with less. So it does make sense for each and every one of us to try to take on more, mm -hmm. um, you know, if we're willing to do that. I mean, I think at, what Aziz did was perfect. And I think the NRF also with Protect, it's a much more global, right? Protect really kind of goes that way and I can see you know the NRF probably one day going in that same direction. Yeah, excellent. Because I think they did start that, that ground but I right. think as is just right on point and, and um, they're setting a trend for our future. Right. And I think it's where we're going. Yeah, I really do. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Rosie. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Well ladies and gentlemen that's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed watching it and until next time let's keep them all safe out there.